What's up, people? Dobbs Rules is right here, and welcome to a top 10. And I mean it. Today, once again, it is a Christmas month. It's in, in a matter of days. It depends on when I when I upload this video. Probably probably near Christmas. You know, like probably the last five days or last 10 days. But um, this is a top 10. Well, last year it was the um, top, I think it was the top five um, Christmas movies that I would watch throughout Christmas month. But now I had to think very hard on what was this top 10 going to be. And I thought of what was my top 10 Christmas presents that I got. This was the most toughest thing to think about it took me ages i had this prepped up for about about uh, around about november it was a hard one to think about because i am 18 i've had 18 christmases 18 years of presents there have been countless things that i've been so happy nearly nearly all of my presents were i was so happy that i got because i was so so lucky and being a collector right now it's it's mind boggling but yeah there's that but anyhow, number 10 is the original Game Boy. The Game Boy, oh, how can I really say it? It's an iconic system. I can, I don't even remember if it was the actual very first handheld. I don't think it was. I think it was the Game & Watch, which was in the 80s. But I was not born at that point. But first games console handheld system that I remember that first came out in my life was the original Game Boy. What I remember what I got with it, I got Tetris with it and Pokemon Red, I think, yeah, Pokemon Red. Then I got Yellow in the May years, but um, yeah, the um, game was amazing. It stayed with the for the rest of my life. I actually still have it in a good condition, protecting case. I've not touched it for about probably seven years now. But wow, what was it? What a game system! It lasted for so so long, and it never broke. I looked after my stuff. My brother had this. My two brothers had the same games console, but they had the Game Boy Color, and they broke theirs in a matter of a month or a year, between like a month or two. But wow, I'm so lucky that I still have it. It was one of my personal favorites when I was a kid, but when I got older, better stuff came out. But really. Number 10, the Game Boy original, the grey one I mean, not the see-through one. So yeah, there's that one. Number 9 is something that you might be laughing, but really have a good, good listen about this story. My mum's told me this a hundred times. Number 9 is the Teletubby, the all four of the Teletubbies. When I was a little kid, I watched one show and one show only, and that was the Teletubbies. The Teletubbies were a big massive thing when I was a, when I was a baby. And um, I always, I still remember the characters. It was Tinky Winky, Dipsy, La La and Poe, and the um, Nunu -Nu, and the, and the um, Sun Baby and all that lot, and that little tiny hill and all that lot, drinking, um, eating tubby, tu tubby custard. <laughs> but um, yeah, the story was, um, they when it first came out, they were huge. It was a big thing for kids. And when they noticed that they were bringing out only the, it was limited edition four of the original Teletubby toys. They were the dolls. They were like they were they were stuffed, you know, like full of fluff and everything. But the only packaging it was was a cardboard background. That was it. With a bit of um, what do you call it? The, the zip lining stuff, whatever it is that you get in um, wrestling figures now. But um, when my mom bought them, they only cost about forty pounds. Eat. Somebody asked her before she bought them to say, I'll give you a thousand pounds for them all, and that's it. She refused, and I'm happy that she did. She, we've kept the um, the background and everything, but really, let's go back. I was ecstatic when I was a kid when I got them. I was so happy because I love Teletubbies, and when I got them toys, I always was around them all watching Teletubbies when I was a kid when I was about probably I stopped watching it when I was about five or six right about that era um, but now because I actually still have them too they're up in the loft still in their packaging I, I did open them but the cardboard is still there and everything you know the little bands for them as well I think they could go 
for a lot, a lot of money and they're in great spanking condition. Very sorry about that, but yes, um, the Teletubbies was an iconic item within my childhood and hopefully if I have kids on my own, they can see what I lived like when I was a little child, watching Teletubbies and drinking tubby custard. <laughs> but yeah, there's that. Right, number eight, let's get on with this. Now, number eight was a big thing, and I mean it big, because it's um, the start of my collection. And that is the Yu-Gi-Oh cards. Yu-Gi-Oh, you guys might be shocked by it. You guys might think it was between in the top five, but no, definitely it was low, because um, every year I got myself one item for Yu-Gi-Oh, and I mean it, just one item. It was going to be between the tins, the legendary collections, or even... Um, I think it was a few booster packs. I think like every Christmas I got like probably five or ten booster packs every year or probably just one or two tins and then one legendary collection. That was once a year, just one of them items. And um, most of the time I got bad cards, sometimes I got fantastic cards and overall I had fun. I had overall they were great ones because I ha actually still have them. I have them all in a folder, all the hollows and everything. I just, I just still play with it. I, it's just a great game to play, and it's a shame that a lot of people have gone away from it a lot now. They've gone into their Vanguard and all that lot. But really, I was ecstatic when I kept on getting them every year. I was surprised because I thought I would stop getting them probably when I was about uh, around about 15 years old. I thought that'll be it. Then I'm not going to get any more you do ever again. And then bang, I still get it. I was like, wow. That is a surprise. I've never knew that would happen to me. Still being 18 and still playing absolutely Yu-Gi-Oh! It's unreal. But anyway, there's that. And uh, let's go on to number 7. Number 7 is finally an actual system. The system I'm talking about is the PlayStation 2. The PlayStation 2 is iconic now. Everybody that I know did have a PlayStation 2 in their life at one point. And I can still say it's one of the best systems they ever got. Yes, that the NES is the best selling one, but this came out with a close second. But within it, I think it had the biggest library of games that I've ever seen in my entire life. I think it was bigger than the PC, I bet. I don't have a clue. I don't play with PC a lot. But um, to put it out, this was the game system that got me playing a whole franchise of Resident Evil, Kingdom Hearts, Final Fantasy, and the, and the rest is history. That's what, that game system made me what I am now, and I thank it, because that's what made me a Game Boy, a Game Freak, a Game Whiz Kid. But, put it on a side though, there were big massive errors, meaning there was a lot, a lot of breakage on it. But when I got it, I was ecstatic because it was the first second generation of handheld system, you know what I mean, but, um, virtual systems. Because I got the PlayStation 1 and I thought, I saw the PlayStation 2 one on um, a trailer years ago when it first was announced. And I was like, wow, look at the graphics and all that lot. This was the era when I actually was caring about the graphics now and now I've changed them. About the story, but I was like, "Oh, the graphics are amazing! I gotta get this! I gotta get this!" And then I found out it was around about three hundred pounds when it first came out, and I knew we didn't have the money for it. So I stopped wishing and just begged—not you know, really begged, but pleaded and hoped to get one, to get it one day. And then when it was Christmas, bang, it was there. But it was not just for me; it was for my two brothers as well. We both shared it until we got ourselves. An extra one, which was the slip, which I actually still have right on my, in my bedroom. But um, to put it out right now, it's one of the iconic ones. Just say that I know it's iconic. Everybody owned it, and there's still a lot of games out there that I've not got, and I would still love to get. Persona, to be exact, it's rare. It's expensive. Look at it on the internet, trying to get one of them games. It's unreal. It's like a hundred pounds to get one game. It's just ridiculous, but I'm just going out of the topic now. But yeah, PlayStation 2, amazing, loved it. Number six is what? Is what I use all the time. It was introduced on YouTube with me. 
It was the iPod. This is my iPod second generation. I'm not kidding. The metal back and all that lot. It's not plastic, it's pure metal. It's heavy, it's like a blooming brick. It never broke. I mean it, I've never smashed it. I'll admit I've actually smashed it just then, but no. It's just something that I've had for years. I firstly got it when I, when I couldn't afford any money to get any CDs anymore. And then I went doing copyright downloads on it and then LimeWire got corrupted and got destroyed and everything I couldn't download anymore. So I had to go on doing iTunes and everything. And I've got over, I don't know how many songs on this thing. Got a good couple of thousand, I think. I've got about a thousand songs. Just check. Yeah, around about a thousand songs. It's ridiculous. And that's been going on for a good long time since the second generation came out. Second generation iPod now is like probably I probably can get it for 20 quid. But I can't be bothered getting myself another generation because it's the same to me. It's just the same with a few updates and that's it. Why bother? But anyhow, I was ecstatic when I got it because I was like, yes, I can have so many songs instead of getting loads of CDs with a CD player in my big massive pocket. This could just go right up there in my little top sleeve and then that's it. But that was what it was. But yeah, generations gone by, new things, they've been Mr. Bendy iPad, <laughs> Bendy iPhone. <laughs> what else will be next? What is it going to be? A flipping rubber band. That is the iPod rubber band. It's broke. But yeah, it's all that lot. I'm just going out of topic again. But yeah, iPod original number two. So that was my number six. What is number five? Well, number five is what I've been playing up to now. And that is the 3DS. The Nintendo 3DS. When I first got the idea of it, I was not happy. I would have said this is a bad idea. It's going to get strained eyes. They screwed this up years ago with the Virtual Boy. If you guys do not have a clue what the Virtual Boy is, it was a big massive system that supposed to be 3D, which it was, but it gave um, a, lot, a lot of people bad eyesight, gave them headaches, and a lot, a lot of colour blindness because it was black and red in, right in your eyeballs. It was that horrid. But, um, but this one, after I actually got it, because what was in it was Pokemon Rai, Kingdom Hearts, Resident Evil Revelation, I had to get it. So I did, and what happened? I fell in love with that system. That handheld system was unreal! And I'm still playing it, because I'm right now I'm playing Pokemon Omega Ruby, and holy god, in 3D, it's unreal! I mean it, it's really good. If you guys don't have a 3DS, just get yourself a 2DS. I don't know if the 2DS actually has 3D, but I don't have a clue. Definitely buy one. They're extremely cheap now. And just play. Just play. And believe me, it's amazing. I love it. When I first got it, I was like, yes, I can finally play Kingdom Hearts, Pokemon, and all that. And when I did, oh, it was just so good. Um, anything, what was wrong with it? Maybe why was it not any higher? It's just a lot more better ones that I got. So let's get on to number four. Right, number four is one that I can say right now comes dear to my heart because my grandfather got me these and my nana got me these. This was the start of me being a big massive fan of this game. They both got me Final Fantasy 1 to 9. Yes, they got me. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 in one Christmas. I think I was around about 11 when I got them. They were the PlayStation 1s. And when I went to game, this is when I first noticed them. And I never played Final Fantasy before, I only played 10. This was when, this is when I had the PlayStation 2 and I wanted to go back on the PlayStation 1 again. They were selling Kingdom, I mean, selling Final Fantasy 1 for 40 pound in game and then went on for every day it was a final fantasy franchise of them all every from one to nine each and every single one of them games was 40 quid they spent 40, 40 times nine bang that price for just me to get me on with that collection of like my legacy i was astonished i was shocked it was just ridiculous 
ridiculous, ridiculous, and I thank them both, because I'm still collecting Final Fantasy, I've got figures, I've got music, I've got the DVDs, the games, everything, it's amazing, um, but yeah, I enjoy it, I still play it, and it was an, an unreal opening when I got them. But let's get on to number three. Number three is a Pokemon item. I got it last year, and it was the Mint Condition Base Set 1 Charizard. Oh, it took me so long to try and get that Pokemon. I went and buy so many Base Set 1 packs when I was a kid, and never ever pulled one. I kept on pulling a Blastoise and all that lot, or an Alakazam, or a, or, um, oh, a Venusaur and all them lot. But never the Charizard. I was so unlucky. And I thought, I'll never get it. And then one Christmas, they, loads of them were on eBay. And they kept on going so high. They're like £100 or 50 quid. And then one the last year, Christmas, opened this little box. And what was in it? Freaking Charizard. I was jumping in mint condition. Now, mint condition Charizard is £120 right there. It's amazing, it's unreal! But boy, it was a present that I was wishing to get and oh boy I got it! But yeah, it was a it was a joy. Yeah, I have it in a sort of case so it's on display and all that love. But really, that's all I can say about the Charles for number three. But let's get on to number two, shall we? Number two is the late is the latest PlayStation, and that is the PlayStation 3. No, not PlayStation 4. I never got that for Christmas. I got that for my birthday. But the PlayStation 3, boy, what a system that was. I played so many games on that. But what was my very first games that I played with that? I think it was Little Big Planet and um, some shooting game. I think it was a Call of, I think it was one of the Call of Duties. Probably I think World at War. But wow, what a, World of War, what a start of a game on that on the PlayStation 3 with zombies. Oh, I miss the zombies. But um, when the years went by having the PlayStation 3, it was a lot, a lot of um, difficulties. I, my network kept on going down and um, all that lot. But I do miss that system. I do have it. I, just, I haven't played it yet. Well, you know, I haven't played it for a while since I've been playing PS4. I've been playing Destiny and everything. But, yeah, I'll want to get back on it soon. Um, I will be when Kingdom Hearts 2.5 comes out, so, yeah, I can't wait for that. But, um, yeah, that's what I can really say about the PS3. It's, it's still particularly, it is old now, but you still get it uh, in a good, reasonable price. And so many games that are ridiculously cheap. I went to game this morning, and they're selling hundreds of games for, like, less than three quid. You can get them anywhere now. It's just ridiculous on how much money I spent, on what my parents spent, what my brothers spent, what my grandparents spent, what my friends spent on me on PlayStation 3 games. It's good being coming up to about 10 grand's worth, I bet. I don't have a clue. But it's ridiculous on the prices of it. But yeah, there's that. But so you guys might be thinking, what on earth is number one? One, it's, it's showing right in front of you. You can't see it, can you? Let me move a bit forward. And let me move to the side. The Ace of the Nates jacket. Ace of the Nates jacket, it was a big surprise to me. I've been wanting to get this jacket for so, so long. And uh, last year's Christmas, I was pleading to get it, um, it's just, oh, my pride and joy, my pride and joy, I love that symbol, that is an ace symbol right there, the dead man's hand, the great R of aces and eights, that little skull, this symbol is going to be right on my arm, it's going to turn into a tattoo soon, and if you don't believe me, I might do a recording of it soon, when I do get it, but why was I so happy because of this? Because of that. It's just that. Can't really say a lot about it, but he's not. I can say it right now. Have that when you go to wrestling. Have that when you go to the streets. 
have that to go in a restaurant or something like that or go into a game, you'll get people turning around saying, look at that jacket now, that jacket's amazing. I've had people ask me to take a picture with him with this jacket on. I thought, wow, that was amazing. And when I got it last year for my Christmas present, I was in shock. This here, this beats PlayStation 2, Game Boy, Charizard, Yu-Gi-Oh, Final Fantasy. It's a jacket. People always said that clothing is the worst thing to get. This is a leather jacket, clothing. And I've always said to myself that clothing will never be a number one. Last year, it changed my life. And boy, it's one of the most awesome pieces of clothing that I own. And I wear it with pride. Because soon, it's going to be stuck up. Right there, people. Right there. This has been my top ten. And have a great Christmas, people. And please tell me what would you like me to do a top ten or a top five on anything else. Please leave a comment down below. I would love you guys to tell me what was your favourite present that you got when you were in at Christmas. And um, tell me on what should I uh, do a top ten or a top five about next time. So without further ado, hope you guys have a great Christmas. And I'll see you guys next time. Cheerio.